Hey guys, welcome back to the Calibrate Tools and DIY channel. Today we're going to give you some tips on how to paint the exterior of your home. Stick around, I'll see you right after this. Now, anytime you're gonna start an outside project, in this case, painting the exterior of your home, you wanna check the weather forecast to make sure there won't be any rain or wet weather that would disturb the drying times or curing times of your paint. Exterior latex paints dry fast and oil-based paints need a bit more curing time, so make sure the weather will accommodate the drying times. It's recommended to paint when temperatures are above 50 degrees Fahrenheit and under 85 degrees Fahrenheit. Always make sure you know the proper ladder and scaffolding safety protocols and don't paint in direct sunlight. Paint the west-facing side in the morning and the east-facing side in the afternoon. Now, a clean surface is absolutely necessary for a successful paint job. A pressure washer with a proper cleaning solution or detergent is the best way to get all that dirt and grime off of the surface. But be careful, have the right nozzle on your pressure washer. A nozzle that delivers a stream of solution that's too concentrated or focused can damage a wooden surface. It can also break windows or lift up the siding panels. And be careful not to harm your own skin as well with a pressure washer. Skin inclusions are very common and painful. So to be safe, go with the lowest pressure nozzle a 40 degree nozzle, 40 degrees the angle of the spray fan. If the surface doesn't show any signs of major peeling or flaking, then a regular garden hose with a scrub brush should do the job. Believe it or not, mildew doesn't just pop up in bathrooms or kitchens. It can appear on the exterior walls of your home as well. This happens when the ground next to the walls are constantly wet. Could be the drainage or gutter systems have leaks, even leaky faucets among other reasons that cause mold to flourish. To remove mildew, Use a solution that consists of one quart of household bleach in three quarts of warm water, and you can also use a detergent with mildew side. Trisodium phosphate, or TSP, is also a good cleaning option. Once you've got your cleaning solution ready in the pressure washer, you want to start spraying from the bottom to the top, and you want to work your way up, spraying from side to side in about 10-foot swaths. You also want to overlap each section as you go up. You want to work your way from the bottom to the top because if you start from the top to bottom, suds will run down the wall, making it more difficult to see any dirt or debris on the wall. If you got a two-story home, start in the second story first, but work your way up from the bottom of the second story. You want to scrape away loose paint, peeling paint, or flaking on your wall with a scraping tool or a wire brush. This loose paint may be in areas that the water didn't get to, or may be a result of the water or pressure washer peeling up weak spots in the paint. Remember, exterior paint is constantly at the mercy of the elements, from the searing heat of the sun to the coldest temperatures, humidity, and rain. So it's bound to start peeling or losing its adhesive qualities with age. Walk the perimeter of the property to find any damage that needs to be repaired, like cracks, holes, or rotted wood. Fill in the smaller holes or cracks with a surface repair compound that's rated for exterior use. After scraping off loose paint from wooden siding, use a power sander with a lower grit sandpaper to smooth it out. So exactly how low of a grit should you use on your siding? Well, first you have to know the types of siding there is out there. There is real wood siding, and then there's vinyl siding or manufactured siding. Wood siding has to be painted every two years or so to keep it looking good. Manufactured siding or vinyl siding is much more durable and can last for decades, only requiring washing every now and then. Sand all real wood siding with 80 grit sandpaper with the help of a palm sander to prep it for the primer. Sand vinyl siding with 120 grit sandpaper to prep it for the primer. And clean off the dust with an unused paintbrush or tack cloth as you go. Remember to sand with the grain. If you don't, you risk tearing out the wood. On wood siding, don't forget to look for any nails that are sticking up from the surface. Take a hammer and tap those nails just below the surface. After that, apply some putty and sand it down before applying the primer. You want to remove old caulking around doors, windows, and trim. Old caulking, like paint, with the exposure to the elements all the time, loses its adhesive qualities as well. Once the old caulk is removed, take your caulking gun and re-caulk all the areas with exterior caulk. Cover all plants, bushes, flower beds, decks, 
lawns, pathways, and sidewalks with a tarp, drop cloth, or plastic to protect them from the paint. Also, make sure you mask off doors, windows, and light fixtures as well. Primer can be used to paint over new wood, bare wood, or existing bright or dark colors, though it's best if you get a primer that matches or closely matches the existing paint if you're going to paint it the same color. There are basically three types, oil-based, latex, and pigmented shellac primer. Oil-based primers have been around forever, and they can be used on oil and latex painted surfaces, so it's very versatile and can be used on all types of surfaces from wood to steel and other metals, including surfaces with existing paint. But everything has a trade-off. It takes the longest to dry, as well as it can be very toxic as far as fumes are concerned. Latex primers are water-based and are more ideal for prepping drywall. It's fast drying and less prone to peeling and cracking. Shellac primer is good for interior paint jobs, but it is more toxic as far as fumes go. Not to mention it requires the use of denatured alcohol to thin it out. Oil-based primers were the standard when it came to exterior projects because of its sealing properties. But latex paints have shown that it also has some qualities that put it in high demand as well, like improved adhesiveness, mold and mildew resistance, and low VOC emissions. That's those toxic fumes I mentioned earlier. Regardless of the primer you use, make sure you mix the primer before you apply it even if it says it's not necessary on the can. Paint the siding first. Start at the top and then paint horizontally as you work your way down. If you have a scaffold available, that makes it even better when it comes to covering more surface. You don't want to overreach on a ladder. That's dangerous. Paint the windows and trim next and make sure you cover any stains that stand out. And don't shut the windows completely to prevent sticking. Paint the foundation last. Now, primer isn't required when applying a fresh coat of paint that's the same as the existing color, but it will enhance the overall appearance of your wall. When using different colors or changing from a darker to a lighter color or a lighter to a darker color, you definitely want to use primer. When you put the final coat on, once again, work your way from the top to bottom, overlapping each strip by 8 inches. After the siding is completed, move on to the trim and doors. Remove the plastic masking from the doors, windows, and light fixtures. Use a paintbrush to apply two coats of semi-gloss paint to the doors and trim. You want to store your solvent-based paint cans, that's oil-based paint cans, upside down to prevent a skin from forming. You don't want to store your paint where it's too hot or too cold. If you have to, find out the local environmental agencies that can tell you where you can dispose of your paint. Hi right, guys, I hope you got some guidance from these tips on how to paint the exterior of your home. I know it can be a daunting task, but if you follow the right protocol, it's a piece of cake. If you learned something from the video, hit the like, subscribe, and share button. And don't forget to go to calibrate.com to help support the channel. We got some great products over there. Don't forget to sign up for the email list, and I'll see you guys next time.